This is an NBC News special report. Here's Hallie Jackson. Good day. We are coming on the air with breaking news and the first public appearance from Vice President Kamala Harris since President Biden dropped out of the presidential race less than 24 hours ago and endorsed her to become the next Democratic nominee. You are taking a live look now at the South Lawn of the White House. The Vice President is set to speak at an event that's been on the books to celebrate NCAA athletes. And sources tell our team the Vice President is expected to speak about the President and his decision to withdraw from the ticket. Now, remember, this is not official. It is not a guarantee that Harris will take the top of the Democratic ticket. But a number of influential Democrats, although not all of them, have moved quickly to endorse her, including potential running mates. I want to bring in our senior White House correspondent, Kelly O'Donnell, who is there at the White House. Kelly, bring us up to speed. What do we expect from the vice president today? Well, we're here on the South Lawn, and the reason for the event is to celebrate college athletes. So the celebratory tone might be a metaphor as the vice president will be coming out to address them, pinch hitting for the president who has COVID. This is an annual event. On the issue that is drawing a lot of extra eyeballs to this today, we are told that the vice president is expected to talk about President Biden, but not to talk about her new role as uh, the contender in this race. Race, endorsed by the president, expected to push forward to try to secure the nomination. And so in many ways, what we're watching is that the team around Harris, both on the campaign side and at the White House, are trying to choreograph things in a measured way, giving the president his moment, his time, and at the same, uh, in, in the same breath, also making certain that she is stepping up, being a good and loyal partner. So this is one of the roles that she would play, to stand in for him while he has COVID. COVID. He's still in Delaware. Officials tell us that the president is eager to get back to Washington. Timeline on that, dependent to a certain degree on what the doctor says. And of course, they are planning for a national address from the president explaining his decision to step aside in the race, but to complete his term through January 2025. So more on that as we learn it based on his condition, based on his readiness to come back. From the vice president, she has been working the phones, having spoken to the president multiple times, but also also, seemingly every leading Democrat in the country, she has put out dozens and dozens of phone calls, connecting herself to members of the party to ask for their support, to say she wants to earn this nomination. So here there is a real celebration for these college athletes who have been planning to be here, who have their moment. That moment will happen, but many of us will be watching this to see how the vice president handles it now that she is in a new arena and competing in a new way. Hallie? Kelly, you talk about the desire to give President Biden some space to have his moment, as you say. We expect him to deliver his own address to the nation at some point this coming week. The complicating factor, of course, is that he's back in Delaware recovering from COVID. Do we have any sense of a timeline for what we might hear from the president? <laughs> Well, we think it could be midweek, but it is a case-by-case -case moment. I've been told he wants to try to get back tomorrow. And think about it in, in this way. The president has already announced his intentions. So part of what he would want with a speech is a chance to be in full voice. We know that according to his doctor's reports, he's been dealing with a cough, a hoarseness related to COVID. Many people can relate to that. Wanting to feel his best. Also time to craft the speech and the stagecraft. Where do they want to set the speech? Will it be prime time? All of those elements that become very important because this will now be a speech very different than anything in his 50 years of public life. Talking about the decision he's made to put country and party before his own political interests after telling us for weeks he was insistent he would stay in this race. I can also tell you from being on campus here today, Hallie, talking with a number of people who work for the administration, a sense of just how out of body this moment is for them. They work for the president by extension. They were we're hoping he would have a second term predictability in their lives as well. There is sadness. There is a sense of what's just happened. And then, of course, for the team around the vice president, there is a new urgency around everything she is doing. By its very nature, the vice president's team is much smaller than the president's team, trying to work together to knit these teams together on the official side here at the White House, as well as at the campaign, will be part of what plays out now. They are certainly encouraged by the fact there has been so much support coming from the grassroots of the party, from elected Democrats toward Kamala Harris. At the same time, we know 
that there is an actual process involving the delegates of the party, lots of steps to go through to try to, with just about 100 days till the election, knit this together to have a new uh, leader of the campaign, at least from the Biden-Harris side. Will there be anyone challenging her for that position? They've had to change the logo. They've had to change the list. And things are changing in increments, big and small, and certainly a lot of new pressure on the vice president, even to do something like this which for politicians could be the kind of event they can do sleepwalking, uh, a happy event for uh, celebrating athletes. That's something that they've all done in various levels of government. And now she's going to do that knowing that the eyes of the country and the world are watching her, not as the sitting vice president, but as the emerging uh, standard bearer of the party with the president's endorsement that she carry on. Hallie? Kelly O'Donnell there on the South Lawn of the White House. You are looking on the left side of your screen at that live look at the White House South Lawn, where we expect to see Vice President Kamala Harris any minute for those remarks, presumably briefly on President Biden before addressing the college athletes that have assembled there. Let me bring in Ryan Nobles on Capitol Hill. And Ryan, to the point that Kelly is making, some key questions for the party moving forward. First of all, would anybody seek to challenge Kamala Harris for the top of the Democratic ticket? And second, who might her running mate be? It seems as though the party has moved quickly around her to endorse her, although it is not a done deal yet. And we are still waiting to hear from, for example, top Senate Democrat Chuck Schumer, former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, on the running mate front, it's interesting because all the folks that have been speculated about on that short list, uh, for the most part, have now come out and said they back Kamala Harris to take that nomination. Yeah, also former uh, President Barack Obama has yet to weigh in uh, as someone who's endorsing Kamala Harris as well. That's a name that's still out there. And I do think that Democrats are wrestling with this idea of unif unifying as quickly as possible while at the same time not making it appear as though this is a coronation for Kamala Harris. They would like to see a bit of an open competition, uh, a democratic process, because this is so unique. This is such an unconventional situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, but it doesn't look like that may materialize. There just is not another person willing to raise their hand to take on Kamala Harris, especially because she appears to have really consolidated the support of the Democratic Party. Uh, it just seems like every few minutes we have to check our email and phones to find another member of the Democratic establishment that is endorsing her campaign. Uh, and so I think that will make it difficult for another candidate to emerge. We saw Joe Manchin of West Virginia very briefly flirt with the idea of challenging uh, or at least uh, putting his hat into the ring and then quickly backing away, but still calling for an open process. You know, uh, Hallie, I think what we're about to see play out here on the South Lawn is something that the Democrats that I've talked to are yearning for. They really believe that Kamala Harris excels in settings like these. And they believe that, you know, when you're the vice president, you only have uh, a very few opportunities to be at center stage. You are really a, a supporting character uh, when it comes to the administration and its work. Uh, and they believe that she has the ability and the goods, if you will, to stand on her own two feet and, and be a star in the Democratic Party. She just needed that opportunity. And, I, and that's part of the reason why you see so many of these uh, Democrats rallying around her uh, candidacy and doing it so quickly, because uh, they believe that she has what it takes to take on Donald Trump and beat him in November. Uh, and so uh, I think this first step out into the spotlight is going to be something that everyone's going to be watching closely. Uh, but then uh, this uh, campaign's quickly going to uh, meld into a routine that is much similar, more similar to the uh, presidential campaigns that we've seen uh, over the past decade or so. Uh, and uh, Democrats are eager for that to be the contest, yeah. uh, a Harris versus Trump contest versus the questions about President Biden and his ability uh, to uh, stand up uh, in a contest like this uh, over the next couple of months, Hallie. Ryan Nobles, thank you very much. As we continue to wait for the vice president to take that microphone there on the South Lawn, we were told that she was a couple of minutes away about eight to ten minutes ago, so presumably it'll be any second. I want to get to Monica Alba, who also covers the White House for us. And Monica, talk us through what we're hearing on the money front, if you will. Uh, we understand from the vice president's team, now the uh, Harris campaign, no longer the Biden campaign, that they raised something like $50 million since President Biden endorsed Kamala Harris, a record one-day grassroots fundraising haul. What else do we know about that front and about where polling stands now, which was critical, we understand, in President Biden coming to the decision to withdraw from this race?
It's an extraordinary amount of money, Hallie, when you consider the amount of time in which they were able to rake that in and the fact that it doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. We are told by campaign officials that they will continue to update us on how much money is being brought in. And remember that this is people donating not just to the Harris campaign, but also to some down ballot races to some key Democrats who are vulnerable. And so there is this moment within the Democratic Party of feeling like there is new breath here in terms of what was really a serious and very dire donor and fundraising situation after the president's poor debate performance, where we really saw some top donors say, I'm not going to donate another penny to this effort unless the president steps aside. There was some grassroots momentum, but we knew that the fundraising picture, at least for the month of July, was going to be very, very dismal compared to now where we are. There's going to be this huge spike at the end of the month because of this monumental decision from the president and by endorsing Kamala Harris that has allowed some of these groups and some of these outside organizations to also try to rally donations around her. So I think we can expect to see this be another key storyline, though, for the Republicans' part. We know that they have also had a monster amount of fundraising in recent weeks and months. So in terms of who's going to have more of a cash advantage, that's now a large question after the Democrats had had much of their advantage erased in recent weeks earlier in the summer. You mentioned polling, Hallie. We do know that President Biden in the last couple of weeks had asked some of his most trusted aides to show him polling about Vice President Harris's standing in a head-to-head -head matchup with former President Trump. We know that that's something that he wanted to see. We know also that the Biden campaign quietly had been doing some of that internal polling and they weren't going to really publicize that. And they were doing that in a way to try to look at this, they argued, because Donald Trump was stepping up his attacks on Kamala Harris in real time. That's how they tried to frame it. But we know that that's also data that likely President Biden would have wanted to see in order to make his decision. And when you look at the public polling in terms of how Vice President Harris does against former President Trump, there is really a lot to compare with how President Biden was faring. So there is some question here about some concerns in some key battleground states, but there is a sense and some thinking that once Vice President Harris is going to really be the person people and Democrats rally around, she could see a bump in the polling. We'll see if that bears out. But that was something I'm told that President Biden did consider. He wanted to know more details about, and clearly it's something that's been a part of the conversation with some other really, really really bleak battleground polling, I'm told, that he was presented with this weekend. Hallie. Monica Alba, thank you so much. Kelly O'Donnell, let me go back to you on the South Lawn, because as Monica was speaking there in just the last 30 seconds or so, we're getting word about a bit of a schedule shift for the vice president. She is heading to Wilmington later today, right? We had learned through our reporting that she had told her staff she wanted a chance to speak directly to the campaign team. Remember, this is the team that was assembled under Biden-Harris working in Wilmington, the president's hometown, therefore the hometown of the campaign, and that she wanted to address them. We now know at 3 o'clock this afternoon, in that hour, she's expected to go to Wilmington to the headquarters to meet the staff. You can't discount the emotion that is involved in all of this. She, of course, had been a part of the campaign, but now takes on a new role as the president has endorsed her, endorsed her to be at the top of the ticket. The announcements are beginning here. I'll just finish up by saying that the vice president will make that connection with the team that will now work on behalf of trying to get her elected in November if things go as they plan, as this event gets underway, Hallie. Kelly, I'll let you take your seat there uh, as we see some of those athletes coming out. So again, just to be clear, this is a previously scheduled event. It had been on the books to celebrate uh, NCAA college athletes here at the White House. The vice president obviously celebrating their accomplishments and their achievements, but doing so on the backdrop of a pivotal moment politically, not just for her, but for the country as well, as she has now received President Biden's endorsement in this 2024 campaign, less than 24 hours after he decided to withdraw from the race. The president, of course, under intense 
pressure from elected Democrats, from members of his own party, to pull out of the race for the reasons that we have been talking about here, concern that he could not, in fact, beat former President Trump come November. We are just presumably seconds away from the vice president here walking out. Uh, and Monica, interesting, Monica Alba, who's with us as well, that she is going to be heading up to speak to campaign staff. It is a new moment for the Democratic campaign, whether she ultimately becomes the nominee or not. That's right, Hallie. And we know that yesterday, again, some of these staffers had no idea that this was coming. They had been told that it was full steam ahead. Some of them were actively door knocking when the president posted his letter on social media. Some of them were planning upcoming fundraisers and trips. And so I think there is a sense that many of them want to hear from Vice President Harris directly to talk about the path forward. And really, yesterday, they did try to assure these staffers that they would still have a job with the Wilmington, Delaware operation that they had built this campaign in a way and in the words of the campaign co-chair to quote be able to beat Donald Trump and that that is exactly what they were going to try to now seamlessly transition to do with Vice President Harris leading the way. So I think she will be delivering that message on her own and she'll be thanking the campaign staffers as we see her approaching there. That's right. Here comes Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, she will be briefly introduced before, of course, taking the microphone at this key moment. Uh, again, the vice president set to head to Wilmington, Delaware, not too long from now, uh, in order to speak with campaign staff. It's a moment. You have to think these like college think students knew they'd be in the spotlight, given that they were coming to the White House. They probably did not think 48 hours ago that they'd end up broadcast live on national TV, given this moment here for Vice President Harris. I believe that Ryan Nobles is still with us as well. The question, of course, moving forward, Ryan, what are we going to hear from some of these top Democratic leaders who have not yet endorsed Kamala Harris? It is possible that they are giving President Biden the space to make his own remarks, as we expect him to do later on this week. Yeah, and, and I talked to one Democratic operative. Uh, Halley, who said that we shouldn't read too much into the fact that you have folks like Pelosi, uh, Schumer, and Obama who've yet to uh, make their endorsements known because there could be a strategic play here. Uh, for instance, when President Obama and Michelle Obama uh, decide to endorse, if they decide to endorse Kamala Harris, that on its own could be a day-long news cycle, especially if President Obama is willing to go on camera and talk about it. So. You know, I, I don't think that we should read into it that there's any uh, kind of reluctance on behalf of any of these leaders to step up and endorse Kamala Harris, but there could be uh, more of a strategic plan here. And, and I also do think that there is a real concern and an angst among Democrats uh, that uh, that this process uh, plays itself out too quickly uh, and that it looks as though no one else was given the opportunity to, to raise their hand and get involved in this race. Democrats are struggling right now here, Hallie, because They've spent three weeks kind of at each other's throats. Uh, there's been a back and forth over whether or not uh, President Biden should exit the race. There have been obviously some strong voices that were in the camp that he should stay in and hold on. There were strong voices saying that he should step aside. There was also a large group of Democrats who just didn't know what the path forward would be. They're sick of that. They are ready to put that behind them and move forward to the next stage of this campaign, which they believe will be a Harris versus Trump one-on-one -on -one event. And they'd like that to be exciting, uh, in addition to uh, Harris herself uh, putting herself out there as the leader of this ticket. Uh, there's going to be a lot of intrigue and excitement around who she picks as her, her candidate for vice president. Uh, there's a lot of names out there being floated uh, that are considered to be strong talents, uh, a deep bench on the Democratic base that come from states like Kentucky, Andy Brashear, the governor there, uh, Roy Cooper of North Carolina, uh, Josh Shapiro, perhaps the, the governor of Pennsylvania. That's a key swing state. You also have Mark Kelly, who is uh, the senator from Arizona. Arizona, also a key swing state who has a compelling life story. Uh, these are all uh, individuals uh, who Democrats are excited about and who would love uh, to, to uh, have their place on the national stage. And it's a converse, conversation they'd much rather be having than yeah. these questions that dogged them over the past three weeks about President okay. Biden and his health and his capacity for the job. Alex. Ryan Nobles, thank you. Let's listen in to Vice President Kamala Harris at the White House. Thank you for all you do to support these extraordinary student athletes. And it is good to be here with so many leaders, including, of course, members of Congress, members of our administration, and our extraordinary athletes. Our President Joe Biden wanted to be here today. He is feeling much better and recovering fast, and he looks forward to getting back on the road. And I wanted to say a few words about our President. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. 
in one term, he has already, yes, you may clap. <laughs> In one term, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who have served two terms in office. And I first came to know President Biden through his son, Bo. We worked together as attorneys general in our states. And back then, Bo would often tell me stories about his dad. He would talk about the kind of father and the kind of man that Joe Biden is. The qualities that Bo revered in his father are the same qualities that I have seen every day in our president. His honesty, his integrity, his commitment to his faith and his family, his big heart, and his love, deep love of our country. And I am firsthand witness that every day our President Joe Biden fights for the American people and we are deeply, deeply grateful for his service to our nation. And so with that, on behalf of our President and Dr. Biden, I am honored to welcome all of you to the White House to celebrate the achievements of these great athletes. Every one of them is a national champion, a national champion. In America, tens of millions of people play a sport as a child, and the best of the best grow up to become national champions. Here today, we have seven undefeated teams, 11 repeat champions, and 21st... You have been listening to Vice President Kamala Harris there on the South Lawn of the White House at an event meant to celebrate college athletes, but at the start, you heard her there effusively praising President Biden less than 24 hours after he decided to withdraw from the Democratic 2024 ticket and endorsed Kamala Harris, who is speaking now. She says she is so grateful to him for his service to the nation, talking about his unmatched legacy in modern history, and also saying that the president's feeling better and recovering fast from his COVID diagnosis. Monica Alba is joining us now. Uh, all of this, Monica, as the spotlight now intensifies on the vice president and her political future. Yeah, and I was struck, Hallie, that she decided in those short comments about President Biden to talk about his late son, Beau Biden, and the fact that Vice President Harris did have a working relationship as former attorneys general years ago before he passed away from brain cancer. And she specifically wanted to talk about the way that Beau Biden talked about his father in terms of the human being that he was, the man that he is. And I think she really wanted to take a moment there, it seemed, to personalize that for the country and to try to approach this huge monumental decision a little bit more as a human being and what it would have meant for him to have done that and what it means for the country as she did allude to his years of public service and his leadership as well but we know from our reporting that the vice president didn't want to speak about that too much at this event she wanted to kind of give it a nod at the top and then focus on what this NCAA championship event is supposed to be about which is commending these student athletes but we know that later on this week she is going to expand on that and she will be talking about that in a more fulsome manner and I think when she hits the campaign trail. She's scheduled to go to Milwaukee, to Wisconsin tomorrow, for instance. We'll hear more about that. And then that also raises this question, Hallie, about when we're going to hear from President Biden in his own national address to expand on why he made this decision. And she did say he's feeling better. He's still recovering from his case of COVID, but he might be coming back to the White House in the next few days to deliver that major address, which I'm told his aides, along with the president, who, of course, will have a very key hand in that speech. They've already started working on it. They are drafting sections of it today and will be working on it as well. While he is still in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, and once his doctor gives him the all clear to return to Washington, we expect that one of his first major acts would be to deliver that speech. We believe from the White House, though I'm told by several officials that the exact venue, the exact format, length, and timing is still a bit up in the air, depending on his health. But I think there is this also larger question about just how we're going to see Vice President Harris now in this newer role. And I'm told that she's going to be doing things like she's doing today, which is some things that President Biden would have been doing as well. She is anticipated to be meeting 
in addition to the president at some point this week with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is coming to Washington for a couple of days. And so I think we're going to see both the president and the vice president in these engagements in the official capacity, because that is still the day job, while now Vice President Harris is going to hit the trail as the potential nominee, while we know President Biden, we're told, also actively wants to get back on the campaign trail now to stump for her, which will be a shift, obviously, in what he had been doing in the last year and a half of his reelection effort. We know that there are even fundraisers that he was supposed to be doing in the coming weeks that it's possible he could do that morph into raising money for now the Harris operation for president. And we know that the two of them spoke several times yesterday and likely will continue to be very, very closely in touch, Hallie. And then I think it will be significant as the vice president is doing her official duties here at the White House. And then this afternoon, she's going to shift more into campaign mode, if you will, mm -hmm. when she goes to the Wilmington, Delaware headquarters and she speaks to the staff there. And she said in her message posting about that trip that it is only 105 or so days to go until the election. And she's really pledging to earn and win this nomination, she says. Hallie. Monica Alba outside the White House. Of course, Republicans are now facing the prospect of a new political opponent for former President Trump and his new running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. NBC's Vaughn Hilliard covers the Trump campaign. Senator Vance has his first uh, solo rally today, Vaughn. And based on my reporting, it seems as though the Trump campaign will go after Vice President Harris in a couple of ways, lashing her, they intend to, to the Biden agenda and going after her record in California politics as well. Right. This is not the challenger that they were anticipating for the last 20 months, back when Donald Trump announced his presidential bid in November of 2022. And I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan this weekend for a rally that the former president was holding alongside J.D. Vance's new running mate. And I was talking to a senior campaign official who told me at the time, before Joe Biden announced that he would not be seeking the second term, who would they prefer to face? And he said, of course, that we would prefer to face Joe Biden, because that is the campaign that they had built and prepared for. At the same time, this campaign official had suggested that they had already begun to look at internal polling as well as planning for potential other options, that including Kamala Harris taking the top spot on the ticket. And that is exactly what has taken place. I was also this weekend talking with RNC chairman Michael Watley, who told me that this isn't a matter of who the messenger is. It is a matter of what the message is. And whether the Democrats were to go with Kamala Harris or Gretchen Whitmer, it is a Democratic Party that has been united in the last three and a half years. And for the Trump campaign, you should expect to see them continue to tie Kamala Harris directly to the efforts of the Biden administration in its entirety, but also the fact that she was uh, appointed to be the so-called border czar by the Biden administration. And there have been a record number of immigrants that have made their way across the U.S.-Mexico border over the course of the last three and a half years. And so these are some of the Oh, when Kamala Harris gets further under the microscope, some of those questions will yeah. be, of course, put to her. And the other part of this is whether there will be a presidential debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And just last night, Jason Miller, a senior advisor to Donald Trump, suggested that Donald Trump was prepared to, in fact, debate her. And on social media, Donald Trump had suggested that he may want to change the venue, the TV news network that would be hosting it, suggesting that it should be potentially Fox that hosts it. At the same time, I'm told that that it is a matter of whether it could be put to somebody else to host it. So there are still some open question marks. That second debate, Ali, was slated to take place in September. But now with the Democratic National Convention coming up in just four weeks from now, of course, yeah. there's a lot of questions before the Trump team further steps up exactly what their plans are moving forward. That's right, Vaughn. Four weeks from today, the DNC is set to begin in Chicago. Vaughn Hilliard, thank you very much. So again, you have just watched Vice President Kamala Harris in her first remarks since President Biden dropped out of the 2024 race and endorsed her as the next nominee. Much to watch in the days ahead for all of us here at NBC News. Thank you. This concludes our special report. Much more ahead on Nightly News and on NBCNews.com.